Thank you for tuning into my channel. I'm starting a sampler quilt today. The first block that I'm going to make for my sampler is a four patch block. So if you want to see how to make a block like this, please stay tuned. So today I want to start a quilt series for absolute beginners. So if you want to make your very first quilt, um, hopefully this is a good place for you to start. In this video, I want to go over some of the basic materials for quilting. And then I want to talk a little bit about my plan for this series for beginners. I want to make a sampler quilt, which is a lot of different blocks that you put together in one quilt so that you can practice um, cutting skills and piecing skills to uh, become a better quilter. In, as a part of this series, I'm also going to show you how to make sashing for your quilt and then maybe even put it together through the quilting and the binding. I'm really excited about this project and ready to get started for you today. Now, the nine blocks that I've chosen for our project, most of them are generic blocks that you can find anywhere. I did look for some inspiration from my block a day book. This book is, it says 365 quilting squares for patchwork inspiration. It was given to me as a gift. And so I've pulled out several very simple blocks in order to make my sampler. When it comes to making a sampler, you can use a variety of different resources to, um, to pull your blocks together. There are quilt books and quilt patterns that uh, already have the blocks chosen. I didn't have the blocks chosen, so I just picked a book that had a whole bunch of different choices. And so that's where I'm going to start. So today we're going to start with a very simple quilt block called the four patch. And I want to go over the materials that you need to start quilting and um, get through some of the basics, such as cutting your fabric. Now, in order to get started with quilting, um, I've pulled just some basic sewing supplies that you'll need to get started. These days with quilting, um, we do pretty broad uh, cuts, with, like cutting the whole, a whole strip of fabric. And uh, so you would, will need a rotary cutter to get started. Um, you will need some kind of ruler um, I'm using, today I think I'm going to use this OmniGrid ruler. It's a 6 by 24 and mine actually has a little uh, ding in it, so I need to replace it. But uh, I just haven't yet. It'll still be fine for what I want to cut today. Uh, I have my regular fabric scissors and then I have a, a couple of small pairs of scissors that will help um, when I'm at the machine and I need to clip some threads at the machine. Um, Another uh, basic need for a uh, rotary cut quilting is your cutting mat. This is a, um, I think it's an OmniGrid cutting, or no it's not. This is a Fiskars cutting mat. They come in a variety of sizes. The one that I have here at this table is a 24 by 36, but I also have a smaller one on my other, um, on my sewing table. And so you can purchase these at craft stores. You can get it from um, perhaps like a, a discount store or like Walmart something like that um, and sometimes you can get a like a starter kit that would come with a um, a cutting mat a rotary cutter a small ruler um, and then you would expand as you grow in your quilting to get more materials like that but these don't have to be fancy things you just want something that's uh, stable enough and sturdy enough to get you started okay um, when it comes to, uh, you'll also need a decent sewing machine, really one that you can get around. It does not have to be fancy. Um, for most of my quilting, especially for the piecing section like what we're going to do today, a simple straight stitch will do it. Uh, when we get to the sewing machine, I'll show you uh, the quarter inch foot that I use when I'm quilting as well. Um, my thread that I use right now, I use the Coates and Clark machine quilting thread. This is, they say, this is a 30 weight thread. Um, and I like it because it's on this giant um, spool. And so it lasts a long time. And I use this primarily for my piecing, but I've also quilted with it as well. 
okay? So those are just some simple materials to get you started. Um, let's talk a little bit about fabric. Um, for the most part in quilting, I use 100% cotton fabric. I have also quilted with fabric that is not 100% cotton. And, um, you know, I think the more experience you have, the less issues you have working with it. But I think that if you can start with some uh, quality 100% cotton fabric, your quilting will be a little bit easier and things will go well for you and you'll be encouraged to keep quilting. Um, the fabric that I'm going to use today for my four patch is out of my stash and I didn't buy either one of these pieces of fabric. Um, so I'm hoping that they're going to quilt up nicely. And if not, I can, um, I can kind of play around with the fabric, hopefully in a way that, um, so that I can get a decent sized quilt out of it. So let's get started. Um, for the four patch, let me show you, well, the four patch block is made out of four squares that are sewn together to make a larger square. And so I'm going to first start with cutting my fabric. And here you can see my fabric. I'm using this yellow um, print, floral print. And then I'm using for my background fabric, this white with some flowers on it as well. And I think because I have a good bit of this, of the white, I'm going to be using it um, throughout the quilt until I run out of it because I think that it'll be a nice unified factor in each of the blocks if I have a little bit of this in every block. All right, so let's start with cutting your fabric. I'm going to stand up because I tend to cut better when I'm standing. Um, I'll start with the white because I will need to, because um, it's bigger, and I actually have a full with the fabric. So um, when we talk about quilting, one thing that we talk about is uh, getting a width of fabric. The width of fabric is from selvage to selvage. The selvages are the the ends of the fabric, and so and there are all these fancy words for these term uh, for what for like warp and weft and crosswise and lengthwise grains and all that stuff. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it because I haven't done a lot of research on it. So we'll just go with um, go with cutting the fabric. And what I'm doing right now, my first step was to press my fabric. And so it's been um, nicely pressed. And some people use a, a starch or something to really get a decent press, but I typically do not use that. I just um, run the iron over it to get the wrinkles out, and it's usually fine. Okay, now my four patch block is going to be, I'm looking for a block that's gonna be 16 and a half inches unfinished. That means that before it's sewn into the quilt, it's gonna be 16 and a half inches. And I'm going to cut squares that are eight and a half inches because I want them to finish once they're all sewn together at eight inches. And when you're quilting, you'll hear about finished size versus unfinished size. Um, Unfinished size means before everything is sewn together. Finished size means that once all the seam allowances are tucked away, that that's the, uh, the size of the block. So I'm going to cut some squares out of this that are eight and a half inches. And what I've done is I've lined up the selvages and I'm just making sure that there are not any bends in the fabric here. And you can see that hopefully they're not. And then I'm going to fold it over on itself. And now that I'm looking at it, this might not be a full width of fabric, but it's going to be enough to get what I need. And I'm going to cut um, the eight and a half inch off of it. Um, I need to go for a second. I'm going to grab my square ruler because I think it'll be easier to cut with that. Okay. Um, this one, it's six by 24. And, but since it's only six inches, I can't get a full cut. So I'm going to get my, the square ruler. It's 15 inches square. I went and got my 15 and a half inch square ruler so that I can get some decent eight and a half inch cuts. And so, um, this is the same as the six by 24, both by, made by the same company. Um, this one is just wider. So I know I can get my full cut out of it. 
So what I'm going to do in order to cut my fabric, I'm going to take my ruler here. I have the bottom of my ruler lined up with the um, with one of the lines on the fat. I have the bottom of the fabric, <laughs> the fold of the fabric lined up with one of the lines on the ruler so I can get a straight cut. I'm going to cut off these funny edges right here first, and then I will have a straight edge to line up with. Since I'm left-handed, I'm going to use my right hand to hold down the ruler, and I have my rotary cutter already ready, and I'm going to put it right next to the ruler and cut upward. If you're right-handed, you'll hold the, um, the ruler down with your left hand and cut with your right hand. Now from this point, in order to get in my eight and a half inch square, first I'm gonna cut an eight and a half inch strip. I'm going to move my fabric over this way. And you could, um, if you have a big mat, I mean, I do have a big mat, you could just turn your mat and then your fabric's already lined up. And now I'm gonna take my, my uh, ruler and line it up, line the edge of my fabric on the eight and a half inch line. I do have now the top of my, the fold is still lined up on a, a line on the ruler. And I'm going to make sure that I'm lined up. Hold firmly with my right hand, then cut with my left hand. And I just used, slid the rotary cutter right along the edge of the ruler. And my leftover fabric is here. From this point, I'm going to cut some squares. For the four patch, I need two eight and a half inch squares. Okay, so I'm just opening this out so I can get the two squares. So now I have a fold here, or the fold is over here and I have two layers of fabric. I'm gonna line up and I'm gonna do what's called overcutting so that I have more than the eight and a half inches and I'll just clean up this edge in a minute when I flip it around. So again, ruler down cut and now I'm going to flip the fabric around and place the ruler again and cut and you can see that it's just lining up the edges and so now the only thing that's coming off is my selvages and I'm going to put those in a special place um, I'm making a dog bed, so this is the filler for my dog bed. Okay, from here, I have two eight and a half inch squares that I'm going to use for my four patch. I'm gonna do the same thing for, from this uh, yellow fabric, so that I have uh, four eight and a half inch squares to start my four patch. So I'll cut this off camera, and then I'll show you what we have. So I have all four pieces of my block ready to um, ready to be laid out. And the four patch is a very simple block to lay out. It is uh, just the four pieces and each piece is diagonal across from each other. So I have my two uh, darks here and then my two backgrounds that I'm going to do here. All right, and it's very simple to sew together. Um, so I'll show you that in a minute. I have my sewing machine all set up and, um, in quilting, we try to aim for a one quarter inch seam. So one fourth of an inch, that's what we want our seam allowance to be. Um, and so there are a lot of different ways that you can achieve this. There are ways that you can mark your, um, your machine so that you get the quarter inch. I am using a really simple um, patchwork foot or a quarter inch foot that I um, that I purchased from the store. You can get these um, on Amazon. You can get them at um, at Joann's or Hobby Lobby, uh, maybe Hobby Lobby. I think I got this one from um, Joann's, and it attaches to my to my machine, and I can just stitch along. I just keep the fabric along this edge, so I get a decent quarter inch seam. Okay, now um, I have my thread already in. Again, I'm using the Coats and Clark um, 
thread and I prefer to use a light gray thread um, a lot of people prefer to use um, like an off-white or a white uh, choose what works best for you I prefer when I'm working with light fabrics to use a light gray and then when I'm working with darker fabrics a dark gray works great um, I'm going to start with my um, fabric I'm going to start with a piece from a different project because I would like for the presser foot to be up just a little bit when I put these pieces in I don't want my um, I don't want my presser foot to eat the fabric sometimes um, it'll when you start the machine if you don't pull the threads tight um, it can pull that fabric down into the um, into the machine and you don't want that so I'm gonna start with a leader ender piece Again, this is a piece from another project, and so it's not, and it's a scrap project, so I'm not like stressed about it. Uh, but I am going to pull the threads tight here, and I'm getting my quarter inch seam just stitching here. And so, if you're not sure about your seam, definitely starting with a leader ender can help um, help line things up, or you know, just get that. You just need a little bit of thread to get you started. Okay, so I'm just doing sewing this down right quick. And hopefully you can see that I have the uh, the right my right side of the thread just on the edge of the presser foot so that I can get that nice quarter inch. Everybody's quarter inch is a little bit different. You just have to find the seam allowance that works right for you. All right. Now that I have my leader ender on, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing these for sewing. What I'm gonna do is sew them in rows and then I'll sew the two rows together. I'll start by putting the right fabric over the left fabric here. And these are uh, eight and a half inch blocks. They are pretty large. So I am gonna do a little bit of pinning. Typically I don't pin, uh, but I wanted to show you if you're a newbie, then pinning could work for you. There are some people who pin all the time and there are some people who don't pin at all. So I'm just using these, are the regular old yellow pins and I'm putting three to four pins in here just because it's a larger piece. Okay. And of course I'm upside down to the camera so you'll have to kind of bear with me. And then when I stitch, I'm gonna stitch along the right side I'm going to go ahead and pin the second piece as well. And for from my point of view, I'm pinning the right fabric over the left fabric. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and stitch these up on camera so that you can see it. All right, so I'm all pinned. And I'm going to do um, what's called chain piecing. So I have my piece already on the machine. I'm going to go almost to the edge. And then I'm going to let the machine go a couple of stitches before I add this piece. This is going to keep that, um, it keeps that presser foot up just a little bit. And it keeps the machine from eating my fabric here. So, and I lifted the, um, I lifted the presser foot a little bit just to make sure that my fabric can go in here. And I'm taking out my pins as I come to them. Quarter inch seam allowance. And you don't have to sew super fast. Go at whatever speed is comfortable for you. Again, removing a pin. Okay, again, removing a pin. taking out the last pin and usually at this point I will remove this top uh, leader ender piece but I'll take it off in just a minute I'm gonna go ahead while the first piece of my four patch is on the machine um, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the next piece and just like I did with my leader ender give it a couple stitches again just taking out the pins as I come to them and going all the way down to the end Pull 
pull this one down just a little bit to make sure that it goes to the end. And if it's not, if my seams aren't perfect, then I'm not going to really stress about it. I think it'll be fine overall. So, all right. And at this point, since these are the pieces that I want to take off of the machine, I'm going to go ahead and add my next uh, leader ender here. And these are, um, this is actually the backing for my um, coin quilt. And so if you've seen that video or if you're interested in that video, I'll link it in the comments. I'm preparing the backing for that quilt. So it's serving as my leader enders for right now. And again, just using that quarter inch seam to attach these pieces. Alright, I'm going to take these pieces off and then I'll show you what they look like and then we're going to go to the iron and press them. Yeah. Okay. Both of the pieces have been stitched. You can tell um, that they're ready to go. When we put them back together, they're going to be this way, but in order to press them, I happen to have them on the same side. When you're pressing your fabric, you want to be sure to use a hot iron and um, whether you choose to use steam or not, that's your own preference. Everybody has a different opinion about that. I have my steam button up, so I guess I prefer steam, but it doesn't have to be that way. We want the seam allowances, which is the, the extra fabric that is outside of the thread here that's going to be tucked away inside the quilt to go to the darker side. We don't want it necessarily peeking out of the lighter fabric. And so I have the darker fabric here on top. And what I'm gonna do first is just press the threads. We call that setting the seam. It allows the, uh, the threads to kind of relax into the fabric a little bit. And then we're gonna open it out and we're gonna press into that seam. Okay, so I'm pressing, I move my iron from the lighter fabric to the darker fabric. And I'm just giving everything a quick press. And I'll do the same thing on the other piece. So now we have our two rows. And so I'm going to sew the rows together. In order to do that, I'm going to flip this around so that our uh, like fabrics are diagonal from each other. Put right sides together. I'm going to pin again and then stitch it. So as I get ready to pin, I'm going to move back to my table here. Back to my sewing table. Again, I have the um, my leader already on the machine. Let's go ahead and uh, pin this. For the pinning, the first thing I like to do is line up this the seam in the middle. And since both of these seams have been pressed to the dark side, they are going to nest. That means instead of um, being right on top of each other, one seam is going to go to to the right, and the other seam is going to go to the left. So you can see that this seam allowance here goes to the right. And then the seam allowance on top goes to the left. And I'm going to put a pin there to hold that in place. And then I'm going to pin the top and the bottom of the where the seam is going to go. So I'll pin the ends together if I can. Okay. And maybe I'll add a few more pins. Again, this is... Um, Pinning is your own preference, whatever makes you more comfortable. Some people are comfortable uh, pinning. Some people are okay and just as comfortable if they're not pinning. Um, I would suggest maybe if you're a beginner to try it with pins and see how it works. And then over time, as you get better at keeping your fabrics together and uh, being mindful of that seam allowance, as you get better, you might not have to pin. Okay, so um, in order to line my fabric up, I'm just moving my, using my fingernails to guide the fabric so that it lines up here. Just pushing it to the edge with my fingernails. And again, pinning the 
the ends of the fabric together and then going back and adding more pins where you need to. And I already have, as I said, I already have a leader here. And so now I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to go ahead and stitch down the side of this. This is going to stitch all four of the blocks together. Again, remove the pins as I go. And the quarter inch seam, that's what we're working towards. And as I get to the where the seams are going to meet, I just kind of hold the fabric down and make sure that everything's going to stay together. Keep removing pins. is going to be done and I can and we're going to press it and then um, I'll show you what it looks like as I do this leader ender there's one more um, piece of equipment that we didn't talk about and it's very it, it is important but I just haven't talked about it yet maybe we don't like to think that we're going to need this when we quilt but we do so I'm going to add it now after I get done with this ender. All right, so here we go. The piece of equipment that I hate that we need for quilting, but we do sometimes, is a seam ripper, which I have right here. And you can get a seam ripper in, um, in any uh, sewing shop, quilt shop, whatever, they're everywhere. Here's one that I happen to have on hand. And this is for if you make a mistake with your quilting, um, this is an easier way to get the thread out so that you can um, so that you can repair it or sew it back the right way. Um, what I like about this is that it helps in a situation like this where I have some seams um, that need to be flat. I'm going to use the seam ripper to help my block get as flat as it possibly can be. Okay, so here in my... Um, in my block, there are a little, a couple of extra threads here at the bottom. I'm going to take these threads out. I'm just going to use the seam ripper to pull them out on both sides. And then I'm going to flatten this seam so that the um, sides go the direction they want to go to. When we did the first part, we wanted to make sure that the seams went to the dark side. But in this case, the seams don't want, they may not want to go that direction. Well, yes, they will. Um, no, they won't. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken those seams out, or those threads out, and now I'm just going to push this down, push down each seam allowance here, because they're going to go in a different direction. And here you have seams that are going to, that we can twirl around, swirl around. So that the all four of these seams go in the same direction so all i'm doing is just going to take my finger press this down smush it real good so now there's a little bitty four patch there and the seams are going to all go in the same direction now when i press it i'm going to press these two seams they're actually going to go toward the lighter fabric it's not going to matter as much hopefully okay so let me press this these two seams and then we'll see that final block here is my final uh, four patch block here you can see it in the yellow and white it turned out pretty good um, I'm a little bit concerned about the amount of contrast in the block but I think the more blocks we have as as long as we use these fabrics as a part of those blocks we'll get some nice um, 
cohesion throughout the block, everything will go well together. I want to show you, I pressed it from the front and from the back. You can see that all the seam allowances are going and they're swirled in the same direction. And if you look really closely, there's a little tiny four patch just in the center of the block. So I'm happy with the way it turned out and I'm excited about the possibility of um, making an entire quilt full of different blocks. It'll be my first sampler that I've ever made, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun to put everything together. If you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, please leave them in the comments below. Thumbs up this video, share it with your friends. Let me know if you're interested in joining me on this sampler quilt journey. I would love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!